If you can do that again, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting could. with bated breath. He probably could. <laughs> I'm sure he can. Yeah. Anyway, all right, thanks a lot, Kurt. You know, forest fires might want to throw a laptop computer into their backpack next time they head out to battle a blaze. A Carleton University professor has developed a system to help them fight fires. Gabrielle Weiner joins me now. Welcome to the program. Thank you. I always thought that forest fires were completely unpredictable, but I guess that's not entirely so. Yeah, they are pretty unpredictable, but uh, there are, there's a lot of people in the world working on uh, how do we make to predict them. There has been lots of uh, researchers around the world trying to study uh, how we can do to predict the, uh, where the fire is going to go based on uh, soil conditions, uh, weather, wind, the slope of the terrain, and there are very uh, good models uh, that are being used for helping the firefighters to fight. Mm -hmm. the, the fire in this and, th and this is all very important, both in terms of you know, where you put your resources, where you put your manpower, but also whether it's going to be necessary to evacuate people from, e a, com from a community. Exactly. Yeah. 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 All right, so g let's give, give us a sense here. We've got the big screen up here like that. Sh sh just give yeah. us a sense of, of what your technology so, does. So uh, the, the main idea is that if you see uh, currently, currently existing uh, firefighting mm -hmm. technology, uh, they are fairly complex to build. They are uh, very large programs. What we have done is we have developed a methodology that makes uh, everyone to be able to create very uh, complex uh, simulations like this one in very simple terms. So if you see, for instance, this screen that we have here, all, all of that we are going to see is defined in one page. When you compare with the current technology in firefighting, there are hundreds of pages of okay. uh, code programming. So um, in this particular example, what we have done is uh, there's a piece of terrain uh, in, in the middle of the woods. Uh, there's a lightning bolt over there. Okay. Um, there's a wind going from southwest to northeast. Okay. Uh, so uh, by just running the uh, model that we have in the previous screen, we can see how fire is starting. Uh, this model accurately reproduces the actual uh, conditions on uh, on the field mm -hmm. and the the main advantage of this technology compared with the others is that whenever you need to make a modification in one of those programs you have to spend lots of resources lots of time in other in in our case by just modifying a few lines in that uh, mm -hmm. program that I showed before mm -hmm. uh, you are able to do much more complex things that were never done before can you give For, us a, a, a yeah. example here okay. in this case if you see with uh, very few modifications mm -hmm. in that one you can see firefighters starting to attack the fire okay. and you can uh, study different okay. possibilities o on the attack um, so uh, in this case if you have detected that you have people living in this area you could uh, act online to see how it uh, it's going to be handled mm -hmm. and there's uh, another third case uh, here we have uh, the same fire but okay. what happens if it starts raining okay okay so um, the the big advantage uh, ab advantage of this is uh, if you see this is uh, clouds came started to rain the fire starts to uh, be put out um, the between one and the other, we just change a couple of very simple lines, mm -hmm. and we are able to reproduce wow. this more, much more complex uh, uh, behavior. Now, I, I made a kind of silly remark about firefighters throwing it in their backpack. Yeah. I, I, it's not to be used in the field, but somebody back at the at command center could say, okay, attack it from this direction, from exactly. this point, or whatever. Exactly. And that's so it. It, the idea is yeah. you can combine this yeah. with geographical information yeah. systems. Yeah. They can give feedback to mm -hmm. the firefighters from a site uh, far away mm -hmm. from the fire mm -hmm. itself, running this mm -hmm. kind of simulation. Mm -hmm. We are working with people in the University of Corsica in France. They are planning to use our technology to mm -hmm. uh, do this kind of experiment. Now, now, could it actually be used? I know it's been a pretty wet, cool spring, and we haven't yeah. heard a whole lot about forest fires, but yeah. could it, is it to the point now where it could be used in fighting forest fires in this part of the uh, world? Yes, uh, because this particular model is based on a very well-known North American fire uh, mm. forest uh, uh, mm. method mm. that we have implemented in our tools so it, the good thing is that we could start with that existing mm -hmm. kind of technology and move it to a better uh, definition of other conditions. And they're saying the same uh, approach can be used to predict things like the spread of toxic chemicals if there's been a spill mm -hmm. or even how people will try to flee from a building if there's an emergency. Yes. You're able to do all that too. Yes, exactly. Yeah, uh, Because uh, our research is not in the forest fire field, it's in the methodology that we mm. use to build this kind of simulations. So we have built uh, models of cars moving in the streets, uh, uh, emergency si emergency situations in the case mm. of evacuation of a wow. boat or, or uh, um, building. And 
things like very complex uh, chemi uh, chemistry or and physics uh, examples, all of with the uh, same technology. Amazing stuff. Yeah. Thanks very much for showing it to oh, us. No, Good to you. meet you. Thank all you. All right. We're going to take a break here on the program. Coming up, Karen Solomon with uh, a news update, including this story.